In this video, we're going to look at how to format the details view of a directory. Here we have my default lister layout, and we're looking at a folder of mixed content. It's one that I've just set up to use as an example because it had all kinds of different file types. And you'll remember that in my default lister, I had increased the text size in the center panel to be 140 percent and I had increased the text size in this panel on the right to be 120 percent. Uh, the text over here is still the size that Windows would have 100 percent. Now I'll throw in here a little add-on of ways you can change text size in Windows Explorer. All right, let's look at this same folder in Windows Explorer. If we go down here, Windows Explorer shows it in this large icon view, which is fine. And that's because it thinks it's a folder full of photos. Um, but we know it's got all kinds of stuff in it. So if we want to go to Details, we just go up here, we go to Details, and there's the same thing. It's basically the same. The order's a little bit different. Uh, it's cropped a few of the fields, but uh, otherwise it's basically the same. Now to change the text size, we would go to Windows Settings. And we go to Accessibility, and then we go to Text Size. And we grab this. And we start to drag it until we get to the size we want. We're going to try for 120. It's hard to do it. There we go. And now we say apply. And at that point, we've changed the size. Close that up. And you may not be able to tell it, but we'll compare them in a bit. But you'll see that it's changed. And if we go back to the large icon view, we see that this text is also bigger. Okay? So, that's the difference between how to change text size in Windows Explorer and back in uh, Directory Opus. Now, one of the things is that over here, the text size over here is controlled by the Windows file size. So it's actually gotten bigger than it was when we started. And otherwise, everything is the same. These columns are totally controlled by Windows Opus, and it ignores what Windows text size are. And that's sort of normal for programs. They sometimes use it, they sometimes don't. I'm going to show you the difference between a text size of 100% and 120%. So I'm going to jump back and forth. Now, I want you to look at several things. One, notice that the height of these rows doesn't change at all. The text gets bigger and gets wider because there's plenty of room in this row. Uh, over here, the rows keep the same spacing. The text gets bigger, but as you notice, there's lots of space between these different folder names. Over here, we'll see that the text gets bigger, but the spacing between the uh, file names doesn't change, which means it still looks nice as the text gets bigger. So now I'm going to switch back and forth, and you watch all those areas. Next, we'll look at what happens with the large icon view. Everything here stays the same. As you notice, the text gets bigger everywhere, but nothing else moves around. The rows get a little further apart because of the larger text size, but that's it. All right. Now let's look at directory opus. Here it is at uh, 100%. And you notice that the uh, folder tree, all the names are very close together. And 
when we go back and forth between 100% and 120, you'll see that nothing really changes except the uh, folder tree. And in this case, everything moves around because the text has gotten bigger, the spacing stays the same. Now, as you see, nothing happens. That's because if you change the size of the text in the buttons or other places, it would very quickly not fit. And a lot of other programs that I've used and changed the text size, as soon as it doesn't fit someplace, the text sort of disappears and the program becomes unusable. And therefore, my experience in the past was that uh, a larger text size really doesn't work. Now, getting back to uh, this folder in Directory Opus, as you see, the columns are name, size, type, modified, and an attribute column. You have to scroll over to see that. But now, attributes is useful in Unix and other kinds of systems, but uh, probably not so much so in Windows for most of you. So to get rid of it, you can do it basically like Windows Explorer. You right click and either uncheck it or you have a choice here, remove it. So we remove it, it's gone. Now for a folder of mixed content, I like to see the size of the file, which is here. I like to see when the file was modified. I like to see something about the image size. I like to see the length of a video. And I like to see, um, you know, if it's a, if it's a image, I like to, if it's an image, I want to see the tags that have been added to describe that. Now, other file types also have tags, so the tags field is interesting. So these are all columns that need to be added. And I like to have the most useful ones appear early, so I don't have to move the scroll bar to see the most important columns. So one trick is to change the size, but before we change the size, we'll add the other columns we want because adding columns is going to mess up any changes we make to size. So I said that I would like to see, in addition to the modified time, I like to see the dimensions of a picture. So to do that, we just add a column, just like in Windows Explorer. We go up here and we right click and, you know, like in Windows Explorer, we see a few that we can uh, check off. But in Windows Explorer, to see all of them, you need to go down to more choices or whatever they call it. Here are the choices columns. And what it's going to show you then is a list of categories of what kind of columns you want. So I want images um, columns. So picture dimensions is the category I want. And I can either pick dimensions or I can pick height. Uh, if I pick dimensions, I get something like this. It showed me the pixel size of the image and the number of bits in the image. And the problem with this is it's pretty wide. So there are two choices we have. We can either you know, limit the column width so we don't always see the number of pixels. Or another choice is we could just use the height of the image because that gives us me some sense of uh, how big the image is. Uh, anyway, uh, before I change that, let's uh, go back here, add a column for, well, while we're at it, just so you see it, we'll add uh, the uh, height just so we can decide which we want later. Uh, we're going to add the uh, date taken. So that's going to be not picture dimensions, but it's going to be in the metadata of the picture. Whoops, picture metadata, date taken, there it is. Click on that. Let's add it to the right. Whoops. All right, there's the height, dimensions, and so on. Let's 
go add uh, the uh, tags. What else did I say? I'm not sure. Tags. Where are that? Tags. Um, they're not necessarily pictures or music. They're uh, uh, probably general. So there they are. Because tags are going to be on most any kind of image. I'll add that. And, you know, the tags are long, as you see here. Um, now, um, if it's a movie, I want the length. And to get that, I right-click. I'll put it here after height or dimensions or whatever. And uh, go to columns. But uh, I looked through all of these categories, and I couldn't find a length. I mean, if I went to movies... There was no length column. Height does apply to movies, so the height column makes sense. It also applies to pictures. Um, now, I don't have a length, uh, and I don't see anything else that shows me length. I may have missed it somehow, but uh, when I looked it up on um, Google, I found that other people had the same problem, and people write scripts to add all kinds of other features to directory opus, which is a really nice thing. It's a much more open source kind of thing. It's a, it's not really open source. You have to pay to get it, but the, they allow other people to add features to it. So I found that there was a script that had been written to do it. And that script included a lot of other facts about videos. They added, ability to add all kinds of additional facts beyond the ones that you saw for a movie. So I added that script. It was a script you could download. I added it to directory opus. I go here to this choice and now I see dimensions of the movie, frame rate and so on, the length. That's the important one I want. That's what I want to add. So there is length, hours, minutes, and seconds. All right. So, those are the fields I want. Now, the question is, do I want to take up this much space for all of them? So, let's go look at that, and do I have them in the right order? Well, I want to put tags at the very end, because that's going to be the longest uh, field, because it can be almost unlimited. And I don't necessarily want to cut it off, because if we put it in the end, we can just keep scrolling if we need to, but you don't have to. So I'll put it at the end. I'm going to put the uh, file type uh, next to the end because I don't really need file type to know what kind of file it is. I can tell that. I can tell it's a text file from the extension. I can tell the, you know, from the extension I can tell what it is. So it's only if I want to sort by file type that I need to know that column. So let's stick it way out here and I'm going to put it right before tags. And then we have length, that's good. Date taken, uh, I'm gonna put that after uh, the dimensions and the length. All right, so now we have, I think that's the order I want everything. So do I want dimensions or do I want just height? And one, you know, if I keep dimensions, I can go down like this and get it this narrow. Um, because that tells me the dimensions of a high-res picture that I've taken. Now, height also gives me a sense of that. So maybe height is all I need. So I could delete this one, okay? I click on that, and I can remove it from my list. All right, so now I'm happy with this order. Now, if I'm going to scroll out here to the end, uh, date taken, I really want to know the time it was taken, because... If I'm looking at a folder with a lot of pictures from the same event, I need the time to be able to sort them in the order they were taken. Uh, so for date taken, I'm going to keep the time. I don't really love, love this format, and you can change the uh, format of the date and the time, and I'll show you that in another video. Uh, so in the case of uh, this column, the type column, I'm going to reduce the length. So that's, this is probably all I need for length of that column. Go here.
here, I mod modified. I don't, I normally don't need the exact time of day it was modified. I only want to know if it's been modified more recently and when, it, when the last date it was modified. So I can reduce that like this and then I will still see the day it was modified, but not the day. So that's good. And by uh, changing the width of this column, I can fit more stuff on the screen. So, you know, especially if you have, remember this is an auto length column. So if we have really long named pictures, we don't want it to scroll away. We don't want to have to scroll to get to all the other information. So seeing this much information at one time is most everything I want to know about a random file. All right, so that's what I like. But now all these changes that I've made are temporary changes. They haven't been changed anywhere else. If I leave this uh, folder and come back, they will be lost. So I have to save them. And to do that, I right, once again, right click here. I'm going to say edit folder format. And here I have the information about the way I've edited it. But this all still says auto. So I don't want them all to be auto. So this one, I limited the length. I didn't want it to be quite that long. So I've limited it to 285. But if it's less than that, it doesn't matter if it be, is less. So instead of just, I could change it to 285, or I could leave it auto and put 285 over here for the max length. All right. So now size was auto, that's fine. Modified, remember I changed modified because I didn't want to see the time. So I want this to be the length of the modified field or the width of the modified field. Height was okay because that was just a, that was, all, and length is okay. Date taken, I wanted the whole thing. Uh, this field, because it's so far out, maybe we could leave it auto or we could use the pull down and uh, set it to what we currently have and, you know. All right, so now we have all the things. Now, one other thing that I can do while I'm here is to freeze a column. And I think I can freeze more than one column. I think if I freeze two columns, that would keep the size and the name as I scroll. But I only want to freeze the first column. So I'll uncheck that. So. That's what I want to set this to. So I'm going to apply it, and that's the, that applies it just for now. If I, to actually save it when I come back, I'm going to have to say save, and it's going to save it and apply it only to that folder. It says save format for a folder, this one. I can also save it for all the folders underneath it, if I want to, by checking this. And to, so to save it, all you do is come here and just say OK. Now, that saved it for this folder. But if I really like this format, and I might want to use it for other mixed folders, I could come down here and say Save and set it as a favorite. And I will call it for, I will say that this is a favorite for mixed uh, content. And I'll call it uh, number one in case I want to compare it to with some others later on. So this is just a name I'm giving this thing if I want to apply this somewhere else without having to redo all of this again. So I say OK. And now we're all done. So we've saved it. All right. Now, notice that when I try to scroll, I still have the name, but it's been cropped off here at uh, uh, whatever we set that to, 285 if I remember. Notice that these, the modified fields are shorter and so on. So let's assume I really want to know the time. I just do this and, you know, we're back to the time. If I want to see the full name, I can do this. And, you know, I scroll and everything is fine. But these two changes I just made to the column list, they're temporary. And as long as I don't save them, when I come back here later, they're gone. 
So let's prove that. Let's go to another folder. We'll just go up a level. Here's the up arrow button. I'm now up about this one level at the top of the D drive. Here's that folder. And we're back to these shorter links. And we're cropping off this. So I, I really love the, the power of this. It's pretty amazing. One other thing I should show you is if I'm in some other random folder and I want to apply this format or one of the other formats I've saved to that folder, I just do the same thing. I click up, right click up here. I say edit folder format, but I say load. Okay, this is the current folder format. I say load from favorites and I have all kinds of assorted formats down here. So I have an images format. If, I, if they were just pictures and not video. So let's load my images format and see what that looks like. All right, so this changed the information the way I want to describe it, okay? And this one saved status. And if for any uh, folder in the cloud, that's a field I want. So that's why it's there. And as you see, a couple of the others are more limited. So let's apply this, and I'll say OK. And now, now we see that we have a dimensions field instead of a height field, and it's cropped off because that was part of the saved format. The modified field is also cropped like the other one was. The date time is, or the, sorry, the date taken is still the same. This format doesn't have tags, which I really want for images. So to correct that for the future reference, um, I will go here to, well, first I'll add that. First I'm gonna take it, it's just the way it was. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna add tags, just like we did before. So I go to columns, general, tags, I could remove status icons right there, as you saw, but I don't want to because I want this to be a very general format for pictures and much of my stuff is in the cloud, so I like that. So now we have the tags column. So that's what I really want for my general uh, format for details on pictures folder. So now that I've got this set, I will go here and save it. I'm going to go to edit folder format I'm going to save, and I want to save it over the top of that favorite format that I already have. And remember, it was called Images 1, and I'm going to save it right over the top of it. It's already there. Do I want to save it? Yes. Okay. Now, n let's be done here. We're going to cancel. We're going to okay, so we're fine. It still looks the same. Everything's the same. All right, let's go up above and see what we're doing. You have if we've actually changed this permanently I don't remember so let's see we're going to go up we'll come back to mixed content we're back to height and length because that's the last thing we saved for this particular uh, folder so even though we messed around and then we even changed we changed that format and saved it we didn't change the format for the mixed content folder so amazingly powerful if you understand it and it's actually very useful the way it works. You know, you may get frustrated at first, but I've uh, discovered it's incredibly powerful and useful and very nice. Highly, highly recommend it. I'm going to show you the difference between a text size of 100% and 120%. So I'm going to jump back and forth. Now, I want you to look at several things. One, notice that the height of these rows doesn't change at all. The text gets bigger and gets wider because there's plenty of room in this row. Uh, over here, the rows keep the same spacing. The text gets bigger, but if you notice, there's lots of space between these different folder names. Over here, we'll see that the text gets bigger, but the spacing between the uh, file names doesn't change, which means it still looks nice as the text gets bigger. So now I'm going to switch back and forth. 
and you watch all those areas. Next, we'll look at what happens with the large icon view. Everything here stays the same, as you notice. The text gets bigger everywhere, but nothing else moves around. The rows get a little further apart because of the larger text size, but that's it. All right. Now let's look at directory opus. Here it is at uh, 100%, and you notice that the uh, folder tree, all the names are very close together. And when we go back and forth between 100% and 120, you'll see that nothing really changes except the uh, folder tree. And in this case, everything moves around because the text has gotten bigger, the spacing stays the same. Now, as you see, nothing happens. That's because if you change the size of the text in the buttons or other places, it would very quickly not fit. And a lot of other programs that I've used and changed the text size, as soon as it doesn't fit someplace, the text sort of disappears and the program becomes unusable. And therefore, my experience in the past was that uh, a larger text size really doesn't work 